the first place, I trade is good. Everybody says, you know, there's mutual benefits to trade. You know, I have something you want, you have something I want. Uh, we trade, we're both better off. Economists never needed to prove that there were gains from trade. Everybody knows that. Fine, let's do it. Um, the problem then is when collectives like nations then begin to trade, people trade from one community with another community, uh, that too is beneficial. Uh, but the idea early on was that there's no point in trading with another country if you can produce what they're, what they're producing for you, if you can produce it yourself more cheaply. Absolutely. So the idea was trade would only hurt you if another country produced the object you were trading for at a, at a higher cost. Ricardo showed that that was really not true. That what was really relevant was not the absolute cost from one nation to another, but the comparative cost. So what is it that you're comparing in comparative advantage? You're comparing two, ratio, two ratios. The ratio of, let's say, two countries, two goods. You compare between the countries the ratio of costs of the two goods. You don't compare the cost of one good in one country with the cost of the same good in the other country. Turns out that's irrelevant. Just the ratio is enough to, to show that if each country specializes in the good that it produces relatively more cheaply compared to the other country's ratio, then both countries will gain from trade, from specialization and trade. That's the important thing. The gain really comes from specialization. And then once you've specialized, then you have to trade because you're only producing one of the, of the goods. Okay, that's fine. That has been elevated to, you know, Moses and the prophets. You know, it, it's, it's a nice, Ricardo deserves a standing ovation, but after a couple centuries, it's time to sit down <laughs> and stop applauding because uh, there's some problems with it. And uh, the problems being that there's, like any argument, it's based on assumptions. And the assumption of Ricardo's argument is that capital, that factors of production generally, in particular capital, is mobile between industries within a country, but is immobile between countries. Well, in today's world, of course, capital is highly mobile between countries, more mobile than goods, more mobile than labor. So capital just, well, once capital is mobile between countries, then there's no longer any reason whatsoever for the capitalist to, to worry about comparative advantage. Then he's interested in absolute advantage. Where can I produce this good most cheaply? I can sell it anywhere in the world because we've got free trade going on. So I don't, wh why are you bothering me with these internal cost ratios? They're irrelevant. I don't care what they are. I just want an absolute lowest cost between countries and then I'll sell it anywhere and that's absolute advantage and that's what I'll follow. Well, economists, uh, well, number, the first thing to recognize, I guess, is that with absolute advantage, you also have specialization among nations. You have gains from specialization. They may even be greater than the gains from comparative advantage specialization because you've relaxed one constraint. You've now allowed capital to move anywhere. So you get gains from specialization and therefore gains from, from the trade that would result. The problem is, are these gains mutually beneficial among all trading partners? They were mutually beneficial back under comparative advantage because capital could not leave. Now with capital leaving, you can lose employment, you can lose uh, all sorts of, of productive activity. Uh, you don't know whether the gains are going to be mutually 
beneficial. I mean, the limits under, as Ricardo pointed out, under comparative advantage, there was always the possibility after specialization, if one country drove too hard a bargain, you could despecialize and go back essentially to trading with yourself, with the terms of trade being your internal cost ratios. So you could never be pushed below your internal cost ratios. You could always. And so that, that meant you would always be as well off as you were before trade. And so that in that sense, trade would always be mutually beneficial. But with absolute advantage now, um, you know, there's no, the capital doesn't remain in the country, and you can't just reallocate it from one <coughs> to another in the country. It's gone. And so it is possible for countries to, to lose as a result of specialization from... Now, you could, of course, have uh, international institutions which redistributed the gains of trade so as to compensate losers. You know, back to our old friend, the uh, potential Pareto and Calder Hicks criteria and all of that stuff. But, but no one even talks about that. that. That's not even done internally for gains and losses, internal to trade within a nation. Why, why is this important? So what? I mean, going through all of this uh, stuff. Well, it's important because the World Bank, the IMF, and the WTO vigorously have for a long time advocated free trade based on what? Comparative advantage, mutual, mutual benefit, a la Ricardo. Fine. But in more recent years, they've started advocating globalization, meaning free capital mobility, advocating that as well. However, free capital mobility is precisely what the comparative advantage argument forbids. It assumes capital immobility. So there's a contradiction. So you, you confront the IMF with this and you say, well, look, either you can keep the world safe for comparative advantage by limiting capital mobility, or you can go for absolute advantage, forget comparative advantage, and then worry about redistributing the gains from trade to losers. Which one would you like to do? They then look at you and say, uh, you don't really understand comparative advantage, or we think you don't, and you know, you may, you may be a xenophobe. And uh, they start waving their hands and then change, change his head. It's, so they don't really face it and don't come up to, uh, to deal with it.